Do you ever find yourself handling some task on an app and then suddenly a tooltip is prompted, your task is interrupted, your day is ruined? Because I have to go through it all the time. I get livid. Uh, and that's exactly what we're going to be talking about in the future of boarding today and how to do it right. Hi, this is Sarah from User Guiding and let's get right into it. Today we're going to be talking about what new feature onboarding is, how the process looks like, why it matters, some great examples, and how you can get started with it right away. Let's get started with the what part. So new feature onboarding, as the name suggests, is a type of onboarding that was designed to onboard users to a new feature. It can take place in and out of an app. It can take place anytime during the user journey and onwards. And it can also happen with different UX onboarding patterns. One thing is essential though, it should never disrupt the user journey itself. What does the new feature onboarding process looks like? At User Guiding, we classify it and divide it into three distinct parts new feature announcement, new feature training, and new feature survey. New feature announcement, which is definitely not a different term for new feature onboarding, uh, is when you announce the new feature to your users or potential users. It could be a blog entry, an email, a social media post, or an in-app moto, an in-app message. Then, if it's necessary or if it's suitable, uh, you can put some education into the process. Uh, where you can use different onboarding UX patterns like product tours, walkthroughs, interactive guides, user checklists, etc. Uh, basically, this is the part you educate your users if the new feature requires it. And lastly, new feature survey is a part where you ask for feedback once the new feature announcement and new feature training is completed. Uh, this can basically happen at any time of the new feature uh, onboarding process, but it is almost ideally always at the end. Uh, and you can also do this via email, social media, or in your app directly. So in short, a new feature onboarding is basically almost half of the entire user onboarding process uh, that you have to initiate with a new user. Uh, the first half is the uh, initial onboarding phase and the rest of it is basically almost always new feature onboardings of different time periods. Well then you might be thinking, is it absolutely necessary that I do new feature onboarding? It is. Because, as I just said, it is the rest of the onboarding process for any of your users. You just have to do it because otherwise they're not going to know about any of your updates, new features, anything that's going on with your uh, product, unless of course they stumble upon it somehow. So then let's talk about the why part. Why do you need to do new feature onboarding? Obviously, a new feature is something that makes your product better and thus it needs the attention so to initiate the circle of attention and user engagement you have to start with new feature onboarding but let me just precisely put it in perspective with three very important reasons why you should be doing new feature onboarding first of all a new feature onboarding raises new feature adoption and product adoption rates how come so let me just say this, if you don't tell a user that you have a new feature, the chances of them finding out about the future is pretty slim. What you want to do is actually do nudge them a little so that they see the new feature, which then naturally will increase the uh, new feature adoption rate, which will then increase your product adoption rate, which is directly intertwined with your retention and churn rates. So. Basically, a new feature onboarding is your best friend in fighting churn. The second reason is a new feature onboarding is the great marketing method for an evergreen product. So let me picture you this. What does an email about a new feature update says about your business? That you are a growing business? That you are trying your best to improve the features at hand? Maybe that you care about what your users have and what they feel about these features, it says all of the above. 
and that's exactly why you want it. Let me picture an example also. Every time around uh, the meeting app does an update, they send an email reading like this. So even just looking at the title, I can tell that around is a fun, nice uh, product. Look at that emoji. Uh, and that around does these updates often. It's what the title says, around updates. Uh, they must name it that because they must do it often. And that I can get value, I can get information just by looking at that uh, subject line. This says a lot about around and it just gives users enough engagement and enough sympathy for the product to get one message straight around is doing their best they are trying to better they're trying to improve their products and they care about me and me knowing it so that's exactly what new feature onboarding does for you and the third reason why is that it constitutes material for an entire user onboarding journey so the new feature onboarding you are creating right now is for your active users right but you're going to be getting more users, which means that you're going to need to onboard them to these uh, new features as well. Well then, what onboarding material are you going to use? Obviously, these. And that is exactly why you need to be careful about them uh, in creation and in design and in use. So create a proper, beautiful one from the beginning so that you won't have to deal with the rest of the user onboarding journey later. So these were the reasons why you should do new uh, future onboardings properly, uh, especially if you're a digital product or especially if you are a SaaS product, you have to be doing them perfectly. But this might have been a little weak, so let me just picture it for you with some great examples as well as some not so great examples. We should see all. Let's go. First example is a new feature email announcement by Notion and I think it's a perfect example for the very first stage of new feature onboarding, the new feature announcement. But what really makes Notion's example is great is five simple reasons. First of all, the subject line teases enough to get everyone interested and also take value right away. Secondly, it's personalized. It uses the user's first name when starting the copy. The copy is great. It's written not just as a brag post, but as an actual copy that offers value in a way. Uh, the visuals help understand what's going on and what has been changed. And there is even a button for people who are actually interested to go check it out. So I just love it. My second example is an in-app uh, mobile new feature announcement uh, by Instagram. And I should be honest here, I normally hate Instagram's updates and new features, but there are some that are really sticky, like the Reels uh, future that's been launched recently. Uh, but looking at Instagram's uh, new feature announcements, you might think that they are actually doing a very bad job, like where the steps, they're prompted so uh, weirdly out of nowhere, but they're actually doing a good job because they're prompted contextually, especially, uh, for example, the Reels uh, feature, it's prompted where the Reels are and they're actually doing a good job because it's a mobile app and we shouldn't have too many steps because in mobile everything is a lot faster as everyone knows so it started off as a bad example for me but instagram is actually doing good my third example is for moodle a education system for universities and other courses and it is an in-app uh, new future training so basically what they do is that they use a three-step uh, tooltip set uh, without a progress indicator but I didn't actually mind it because in the end it was uh, just three steps uh, and a short uh, copy really contributes to its value so basically Moodle's uh, example wasn't necessarily the perfect one but with a bad user flow they actually achieved good results so it's seven my fourth example is from ClickUp and it's some uh, sort of on-spot new feature training. Uh, so apart from their occasional great uh, update emails, ClickUp also does in-app onboarding. 
Uh, and in this example, they are doing some sort of contextual in future training. Uh, and even though it doesn't really look perfect, the fact that they are doing it contextually wins heart because normally they are used to doing um, out of nowhere tooltips and you know emails. But this instance, ClickUp really does it good. My fifth example is from TikTok and it's actually a combo of the new future onboarding process. It's an announcement and education. Um, TikTok uses a slide out modal to uh, introduce users to its new feature auto captions. It uses a visual to give a kind of an idea what the uh, auto generated captions are going to look like and they do this uh, copy formatting really good for everyone to actually read them. Uh, Twitter also does this a lot uh, better than most. Uh, and I could say that it is a very good turning point for mobile apps with the slide out models and good formatting. Uh, kudos to TikTok for showing that they can do onboarding too. My sixth example is from Kama and it's an immediate survey for a new feature. Uh, during this experience, I was introduced to two new features. Even though the survey is kind of more about the design process and it works more like an NPS survey, uh, I really enjoyed it that they prompted it immediately after I finished my design uh, and that I could also rate how I did with the uh, new features. So I really liked it. Canva is already a great contextual border, but this one, it really tops it off. And now for my very final example that I think is my favorite because it brings everything on a new feature reporting together, uh, announcement training and feedback. Uh, Phrase does a great job with their uh, new feature model. Now, not necessarily, it's, um, it's not really beautiful because it is prompted uh, in a very intrusive way in a big model when I'm trying to do some task but it has a saving grace to it because uh, it has this teeny tiny feedback box with uh, some uh, emojis that indicate your happiness with the new future uh, and a copy in the modal kind of um, educates users on how the new update is going to affect their workflow. So Phrase is honestly one of my favorites when it comes to new feature onboarding and this example is my very favorite of them all. So then the actual big question, how do you do new feature onboarding? Uh, you might be thinking, well, that's the developer's job. I don't code. Well, what if you didn't have to? Because it's the developer job for uh, companies that have the time and budget and uh, the employees to uh, get their effort and the project. So what if you don't have all that? What if you need a different solution? One that is no code, one that can be used easily by anyone, and one that can still give you the exact same value without the need for coding or maintaining it in the future. I'm talking about user guiding and with user guiding you can create a new feature onboarding in three simple steps. Let's look at them right away. First step, let's create a new guide. You're going to want to go to user guiding panel and create a guide there. You're going to go to the guide section, uh, click the new guide button and then you're going to need to name your guide and enter a new URL. In this case, we're going to use phrases UI. The second step is we're going to add some steps and customize it. Uh, we have already been directed to the phrase UI and we have the user guiding uh, Chrome extension open. Uh, we're just going to uh, click on a step button and start customizing it. Uh, I'm just going to make it uh, look like it's pointing to a specific area with my tooltip to make sure that my hypothetical users uh, journeys are not interrupted uh, And then I'm going to customize my tooltip a little bit. I just change some text Properties I can change its design color whatever. I'm just gonna go with this for now I'm just gonna add a different tooltip as well um, I'm gonna go through the same process, but I'm gonna make it uh, direct to somewhere else uh, it will point to some other element on the screen. 
uh, then when I'm done, I can save it and preview it as well. And our very last step, I'm just gonna configure and finish my mini uh, new feature onboarding. Uh, all I do is go back to the user guiding panel because I'm finished with the design part. Uh, I will find my new guide in the guide section again. Uh, I will just click the uh, settings to make sure I configure everything correctly. I turn it uh, into an active one uh, and then I configure some little tweaks like auto triggering uh, and scheduling and user segmentation and everything. Uh, then after that I'm just gonna save it and publish changes and my new feature onboarding will be ready. While there are actually a lot of different design options like using models or um, input fields to make it more interactive or hotspots and other in-app message types, I went with a mini one. There are a lot more uh, opportunities to try in user guiding, uh, but don't take my word for it. I say you try it yourself. You can find the link in the description uh, and try it out yourself. So to wrap up, let me just say this, new future onboarding is something that can easily fade into the background and especially if it's a bad one it is really easy for it to do that uh, but once you figure out how to do it correctly you can just get people to say well let me just try this and that's when you know you did it right but do you know how to do it right i just hope that you do after everything we've talked about uh this was sarah from user guiding thank you for watching if you have any better examples let me know in the comments and see you another time